Blessed is our God, always, now, and forever, and to ages of ages. Amen. Come, let us worship God, our King. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and our God. Come, let us worship and fall down before the Christ himself, our King and our God. Come, let us worship and fall down before him. Bless the Lord, my soul, Lord, my God, you're greatly magnified with honor and majesty, you are clothed. Wrapping yourself in my distant garments, stretching out the heavens like a tent, you who covers the upper chambers with waters, you who makes the clouds your chariot, you who walks about in the wings of the winds, you who makes your angel spirits and your ministers playing fire. You set the earth upon a true foundation, it will never be moved. The deep like a garment is his clothing, the waters stand above the mountains. At your rebuke, they flee the voice of your thunder, they cower with fright. The mountains ascend, the plains descend to the place you founded them. You set a boundary that they shall not pass, nor shall they return again to cover the earth. You who make springs gush forth and ravines between the mountains, they will flow. They will give drink to all the beasts of the field, these wild ass to the sea for their thirst. And then the birds of the air will make their habitation from the rocks that will sing out. When you water the mountains from your upper chambers with the fruit of your work, the earth shall be fed. When you cause grass to grow for the cattle and plants for humankind to cultivate, to bring forth bread from the earth and wine to gladden the human heart, oil to brighten the human face and bread to sustain the human heart, the trees of the Lord shall be watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon which you planted. There sparrows will build their nest, the home of the hare, and is chief among them. The high mountains are for the deer, a rock is a refuge for the hares. You made the moon to mark the seasons, the sun knows its setting. You set the darkness, and it became night. In it all the animals of the forest will pass through, the cubs roaring to seize and to seek their food from God. The sun arose, and they gathered together, and in their dens they lie down. A person will go out to his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how magnified are your works in wisdom. You have made them all. The earth is filled with your creation. This great and wide sea, there with creeping things innumerable, living things small with the great. Their ships travel, this leviathan that you formed to mock at them. All look to you to give them food in due season. When you give to them, they will gather. And when you open your hand, all things together will be filled with kindness. But when you turn away your face, they will be dismayed. You take away their spirit, and they will die and return to their dust. You will send forth your spirit, and they will be created, and you will renew the face of humankind. Let the glory of the Lord endure forever. The Lord will rejoice in his works. You who looks upon the earth and makes it tremble, you who touches the mountains and they smoke, I will sing to the Lord in all my life. I will make music to my God while I have being. May my prayer be pleasing to him, and I will rejoice in the Lord. May sinners die from the earth and the lawless, so that they be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. The sun knows it's time for setting. You make it darkness, and it is night. O Lord, how magnified are your works and wisdom. You have made them all. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For his grace, our Father and Bishop Irenae, for the honorable priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our faithful and Christ's loving people, for all Orthodox Christians, that the Lord God will aid them and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this country, the President, for all civil authorities, and for the Christ loving armed forces everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and country, for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. O Lord, have mercy. Commemorating the most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Mother of God and of the Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us surrender ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. To you, O Lord. For to you are all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, I call upon you. Hear me, hear me, O Lord. Lord, I call upon you. Hear me, receive the voice of my prayer. When I call upon you, sight as incense, and let the lifting up of my hands be an evening sacrifice. Hear me, O Lord. Set a guard, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing, to busy myself with the wicked deeds in company with men who work iniquity. And let me not join with their choice ones. The righteous man shall correct me with mercy, and he shall reprove me. But let not the oil of the sinner anoint my head, for my prayer shall be intense in the presence of their pleasures. Their judges are swallowed up by the rock. They shall hear my words, for they are pleasant. As a clod of ground is dashed to pieces on the earth, so our bones are scattered beside the grave. For my eyes, O Lord, O Lord, are toward you, and you, I hope, take not my soul away. Keep me from the snares they set for me, and from the stumbling blocks of those who work iniquity. Sinners shall fall into their own nets, I am alone until I escape. I cry with my voice to the Lord, with my voice I pray to the Lord. I pour out my supplication before him, I declare my affliction in his presence. When my spirit fainted within me, then you knew my paths. For in the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. I looked to the right and saw, but there is none who knows me. No refuge remains to me, no one cares for my soul. I cry to the O Lord, I say, you are my hope, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am exceedingly humbled. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand, but there is forgiveness with you. Venerable Maximus, you did preach him who in his loving kindness became man in his good pleasure, who is known as having two wills and actions. You have stopped the gaping mouths of the ad ab abominable ones who at the temptation of the devil, the author of evil, worship him as having a single will and action. For your name's sake, I have waited for you, O Lord. My soul has waited for your word. My soul has hoped on the Lord. With the course of thy doctrines, O Father Maximus, thou didst strangle Pyrrhus, the evil-minded trifler, and its cinder persecution and tribulations, O ever-memorable one, cruelly wounded thy tongue cut off, and the divine hand which is stretched forth to God, writing wherewith thou hast wrought exalted words. From the morning watch until night, from the morning watch, let Israel hope on the Lord. 
O blessed one, your tongue was wholly sharpened by the Spirit, like the pen of a scribe, writing the law of divine virtues with beautiful letters of grace upon the tablets of our hearts and imparting by your doctrine the incarnation for men into essences of him who desired to appear in a single hypostasy. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will deliver Israel from all his iniquities. O all-glorious wonder, the dove which came from on high converses with the martyr Neophytus in human speech, wherefore he is resplendent with the angelic life, wherein he suffered mightily, though but a youth. O the godly works of the martyr tortured in five ways, by his supplication save our souls. O Christ, in that thou art compassionate. Praise the Lord, all nations, praise him, all peoples. O glorious wonder, Neophytus of perfect wisdom, from earliest infancy performs miracles through the activity of the Spirit. By his entreaties he causes water to pour forth from a rock and raises up the dead woman whose offspring he was. Oh, the godly works of the martyr, tortured in five ways by his supplications. Save our souls, O oh Christ, in that you are compassionate. For his mercy is abundant towards us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. O oh, all glorious wonder, the thrice blessed Neophytus suffered for Christ, put to fright the enemy with his excellent visions, quench the fire when he was cast therein, and show a savage beast to be terrified. O oh, the invincible might, wherein the athlete causeth all to marvel, by his supplication save us, O oh God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O venerable Father, word of your corrections has gone forth into all the earth. Wherefore you have found the reward of your labors in the heavens, and have destroyed hordes of the demons, and attained unto the ranks of angels, whose life you did blamelessly emulate, as you have boldness before Christ, ask peace for our souls. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. The unblemished you lamb and immaculate mistress, when of old she beheld her lamb upon the tree of the cross, exclaimed maternally and marveling, cried out, O oh, my child, most sweet, what new and most strange sight is this that I see? How has the thankless synagogue betrayed thee to be tried by Pilate and condemn thee to death? who art the life of all. Yet do I him thine ineffable condescension, O word. Wisdom, let us be attentive. Let some light of the holy glory Jesus Christ, now that we have come to the setting of the 
sun, and behold the light of evening. We praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for me it is at all times to worship Thee with voices of praise, O Son of God. And giver of life. Therefore, all the world doth glorify thee. Wisdom, let us be attentive. Peace be unto all. Wisdom, let us be attentive. The evening proclaimed on to the fifth tone. Save me, O God, by your name, and judge me by your strength. Save me, O God, by your name, and judge me by your strength. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. Save me, O God, by your name, and judge me by your strength. Save me, O God, by your name, and judge me by your Let us say with all our soul, with all our mind, let us say. Lord, have mercy. O Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your great goodness. We pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for his grace, our Father and Bishop, in name, for the priests, deacons, monastics, and all of the clergy and for all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray for this country, its president, and all those serving in civil authority and the Christ-loving armed forces. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray for our Christ-loving and suffering Orthodox people in Kosovo, Metochia, in the Ukraine, for those suffering throughout the world, for Christ's sake and for their salvation. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again, we pray for the blessed ever memorable, most holy Orthodox patriarchs, for the blessed founders of this holy church and for all our Orthodox fathers, mothers, brothers and sisters departed from this life before us, who here in all the world lie asleep in the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, forgiveness, and remission of sins of the servants of God, the benefactors, beautifiers, stewards, and supporters of this holy church. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable church, for those who labor and those who sing, and for all the people here present who wait from your great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For your merciful God loves humankind, and to you we ascribe glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Enable us, O Lord, to keep this night without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, and praised and glorified is your name forever. Amen. Let your mercy be upon us, O Lord, even as we have set our hope on you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O Master, make me to understand your commandments. Blessed are you, O Holy One, enlighten me with your precepts. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not despise the works of your hands. To you belongs worship, to you belongs praise, to you belongs glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us complete our evening prayer unto the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. For perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless evening, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. 
For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For a Christian ending to our lives peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Mother of God and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us surrender ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. To you, O Lord. For you are a good God and love humankind, and unto you do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads unto the Lord. To you. Lord our God, who bowed the heavens and came down for the salvation of humankind, look upon your servants and your inheritance. For to you, the awesome judge, who yet loves humankind, of your servants bowed their heads and submissively inclined their necks, awaiting not help from men, but entreating your mercy and looking confidently for your salvation. Guard them at all times, both during this present evening and in the approaching night, from every foe, from all adverse powers of the devil, from vain thoughts and from evil imaginations. Blessed and most glorified be the majesty of your kingdom, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto ages of ages. Amen. The apostles loved you with sincerity on earth. They counted all things as refuse that they might win you alone. They surrendered their bodies to torture for your sake. Now in glory they pray for our soul. I lift up my eyes to you, who art enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of the servant looks to the hands of his master, and the eyes of a handmaid into the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he have mercy upon us. O Lord, you have magnified the memory of the apostles on earth, and now in their memory we all glorify you, since for their sake you grant us healing, by their prayers granting the world peace and great mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have been filled with enough of contempt. Too long our souls have been filled with the scorn of those who are at ease, the contempt of the proud. Fame and praise befits the saints, for they bowed their necks beneath the sword for your sake, who bowed the heavens and came down. They shed their blood for you, for you emptied yourself and took the form of a servant. By emulating your poverty, they too humbled themselves, even unto death by their prayers have mercy on us, O God, according to the abundance of your great mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We honor thee as the instructor of multitude of monks, O Maximus, our Father, for by thy steps we have truly learned to walk aright. Blessed art thou who, serving Christ, didst denounce the power of the enemy. O converser with the angels, companion of the venerable and the righteous, with them beseech the Lord that our souls find mercy. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. What is this sight that I see, which mine eyes behold, O Master? Do you who sustains all creation die? Suspended upon the tree, granting life unto all. The Theotoko said, weeping, when she beheld upon the cross, the God and man who had shone forth ineffably from her. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. 
for mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of your people Israel. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Champion of orthodoxy, teacher of purity, and of true worship, enlightener of the universe, and adornment of hierarchs, O wise Father Maximus, your teachings have gleamed with light upon all things. Intercede before Christ God to save our souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Your holy martyr Neophytus, O Lord, through his suffering has received an uncorruptible crown from you, our God. For having your strength, he laid low his adversaries and shattered the powerless boldness of demons. Through his intercession, save our souls. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. We have obtained your venerable icon, O Theotokos, as a divine consolation and unshakable wall of defense from which you do mystically dispensate, dispense consolation and strength to us who from our souls cry out in faith to you, O consoling lady. Glory to your wondrous chaste lady. Glory to your assistance. Glory to your consolation of us, O undefiled lady. Wisdom. Father bless. Christ our God, the existing one, is blessed always now and forever mm -hmm. and unto ages of ages. Amen. Preserve, O God, the holy Orthodox faith and Orthodox Christians unto ages of ages. Is the most holy Theotokos save us. More honorable than the cherubim and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without defilement you gave birth to God the Word. True Theotokos, we magnify you. Glory to you, O Christ, our God, and our only sure hope. Glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Father, bless. May Christ, our true God, through the prayers of his most pure and holy mother, by the power of the precious and life-creating cross, the supplication of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, for Father among the saints, Nicholas, the one worker of Mira Nicaea, patron of this church, of the venerable Father Maximus, the confessor, whom we commemorate this day, of the holy martyr Neophytos, and of the holy icon of the Mother of God, the consolation, whom we commemorate this day, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim, and Adam, of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for he is good and loves humankind. Amen. The prayers of holy fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. Blessing of God be upon all of you. God bless you. Bless you, John. Bless you.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, if I remember correctly, we are in the holy mystery of matrimony and marriage. And we've been talking a little bit about um, what it means to come together as man and wife. And I think we started, now we're just going to, I'm going to do a little bit of a review because I think it's been two months since our last class and forgive me, um, between health issues and other things, it's been a, a long uh, a journey, but glory to God, we're here today. <laughs> um, in the first chapter of Genesis, in verses 26 and 27, God talks about the creation of man. And he says, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And that's kind of where we, where we left off, if I remember correctly, the last time, um, that we were discussing the fact that only within humankind is there any sort of gender. In all the creation of all the animals, there was never any mention of male and female. It's only when it comes to humanity that it becomes talk about male and female. And in the Old Testament, especially within the first five books, most verses are written in a poetic couplets. The first says one thing, the second reveals something about that first. So, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Male and female, he created them, refers and explains something about what it means to be created in the image of God. And if I remember correctly, Emma, you hit the nail right on the head the last time whenever you said the reason that we have that coupling is because there needs to be sacrificial love in order to be in the image of God. And that's why we have that verse there, male and female he created them, which that relationship between male and female reflects on what it means to have that sacrificial love. Between otherness, male and female being other within humanity. I don't know about you, but being married 14 years, I know that my wife is other than me, although we come together as one. So all of that reflects on what it means to be in that sacrificial love, which means what it, mean, what it is to be in the image of God. Um, that being said, we're constantly confronted in society today with an idea that says gender can be created by our psyche. I wish I could say something different, but I must always speak the truth. Our psyche cannot create gender. Only God can create gender. Our minds cannot create our gender. God, in his wisdom, creates our gender through the combination of mind and soul and body. And that's where we be become male and female. And that's the other thing that um, society forgets. Our existence, our creation, our living is a becoming, not an existence. We are here to become. We're not here just to be the status quo. We are here to constantly change, have a dynamic life. If we're to get to something and just sit there, any time that there is stopping of progress, whether it's in biology, whether it's in business, whether it's in life itself, that's death. For us to be alive, we are continually changing Every seven years, our, all the cells in our body are completely new from where they were seven years before. In the same respect, we are constantly 
becoming who we are meant to be in God's love. So whenever we are given a gender by God, that doesn't mean that we're supposed to be comfortable with it. We aren't always. The thing that we forget, though, is that God gives us everything for our salvation. Some of us were blessed with the ability to be comfortable in our gender. And glory to God for that. But others were not. And so that becomes a cross that they must bear. Must bear. Just like some were blessed to not be driven by the passion of lust. Others, they have to fight that passion every single day, and that is the cross they have to bear. It's a difficult thing to comprehend, but these crosses that were given are there in order to help us to develop in that sacrificial love, which helps us to truly become in the image and live in the likeness of God. And that's, I think, where society drops the ball. That we are to celebrate the things that we struggle with, as opposed to celebrating the struggle, we celebrate the obstacle, if you will. Then what happens is we never get around the obstacle, we never get through the obstacle, we never get to the other side where there is no more struggle. That's the thing that, um, and I say society, but in a very real sense, this is um, the devil, the adversary at work to make us believe that the obstacles that we are confronting are ones that are to be ignored as opposed to ones that are to be struggled against, struggled with. And I can tell you, whenever we truly struggle with those crosses and try to carry those crosses that God gives us in our life, then he helps us to carry them. He gives us the strength to carry them. He gives us the people in our lives that will help us to develop the strength to carry them. And that's the other thing that we forget about. We are to love one another and help to bear one another's burdens. So yes, we know that there are going to be people that struggle with their gender. And so we are to do our best to love them for who they are, where they are, at that moment. It's not ours to castigate. It's not ours to um, denounce. It is ours to be able to provide a loving presence. It then begs the question, how do we confront truth in that moment? If somebody believes that they are a man trapped in a woman's body or vice versa, what is the way to confront that truth? Well, I don't know about you, but Christ said in the chapter, the seventh chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, the first verse, judge not lest you be judged, condemn not lest you be condemned. Our job isn't to force truth upon somebody. Our job is to be a mirror of that truth. We are to be that reflection of God's love for that person in the moment. God will reveal truth to them. All that being said, getting back to the regular male and female relationship within marriage, the beauty of having that oppositional yet complementary relationship is that there's the possibility for struggle and victory. Struggle in that there are times whenever my wife and I don't see eye to eye and we argue. Victory in those moments when we can then deny ourselves, sacrifice our, our own wants for the sake of the other, and live for the other. And that's the ultimate goal of marriage 
that we then become that reflection of the communal love of the Holy Trinity. That love which is completely unconditional. That love which says, what I have is yours. That love that says, in the, the opposite, what I have is yours as well. That there's that beautiful and complete fullness of sharing of who they are with one another. And there is nothing that is withheld from one another. Now, I can tell you in knowing many couples who have gotten to 50 years and even 60 and one who got into 75 years of marriage, that within all of their married life, there were still moments when they didn't know everything about the other. They had a really good idea, but they didn't know everything about the other. But that's also the beauty of what it means to be created in the image of God. That means that we too have a spark of the infinite within us. That there's always more depth to who we are as a person. So what one of the things that we preach in the Orthodox marriage coming together is that this isn't something that is lasting until death do you part. But rather it's something that begins and is consecrated and um, becomes incarnate at the marriage service but then continues throughout all of eternity, walking side by side toward Christ. And that's the heart of what it means to be in a Christian marriage. That, that walking the pathway to salvation together, side by side, lasts forever. And so that spark of the infinite becomes a way that we can continually grow closer and closer together throughout all of eternity. Others that would be farther away from us would see us as just one. But as we would be walking together, we can still see that we are separate. In the same respect, as we are going through all of eternity, we can see um, how far away we are from God. But the closer that we get to God, other people, as they're looking upon us, would be able to hardly differentiate between where God ends and we would begin. That's that beauty of that relationship, that beauty of that fullness of revelation of the self to the other, that beauty of constantly discovering the new within the other, and of also being reminded of the old as well. Now, there's a reason why we have um, this revelation that happens over all of eternity in a relationship. That is a wonderful gift that we can then cherish and live with and glorify God with forever. And in a nutshell, that's orthodox marriage. <laughs> um, so we talked a little bit about gender today, uh, also about the, the heart of, of what marriage is. One of the things that I do want to um, discuss at our next class, which is going to be in two weeks, um, is going to be about sexuality in marriage because that's something that's always the hot topic. Um, so that's going to be our next um, endeavor is discussing sexuality within marriage. Um, any questions or comments for today? All right. Well, thank you all for coming. God bless you and have a wonderful day.